Welcome back to the What's Your More podcast. Today, I'm joined by an amazing guest uh, that I've got a chance to know over the last couple of months, and uh, I can't say how excited I am to have you on this show. Patrick, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's uh, good to have you. I will, uh, you know, we had a chance to ch- chat before and and whatnot. I'm just excited for the opportunity, and uh, this is what I, I really love getting a chance to discuss. I talk about sports all the time, but <laughs> I want to talk about things that are more impactful and uh really going to bring value to people's lives. And man, you're doing that. You're absolutely doing that. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting just briefly on how we met. We met at a UNF basketball game yep. and, uh, you know, you're a superstar when you enter the room. Cause when you entered, it was just like, woof. Yeah, people came right crazy. to you and they were like, man, that's Patrick Young. And I'm like, yeah, that's Patrick Young. But I mean, you had, a, and what I looked over is here's the interesting part. There wasn't a minute you had, I mean, we're, we're deep in the second half and I'm like, finally, this man has been left alone. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think I got a chance to watch the game. I don't think you really did either. And I mean, and, and, I, and then your wife, Whitney was there and your daughter was there. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, all right, I'm, I do want to say hi. I want to introduce myself, but I don't want to take away from that family time. And I saw your wife pill away with your daughter for a second. I was like, all right, now I'm going to make that move <laughs> to go over there, and introduce myself. And, um, you know, man, I tell you what, like, uh, it was interesting. You know, people talk about divine intervention. And I felt like, you know what? I had heard a little bit about your story. I didn't know enough uh, to even try to attempt to, to speak about it. Mm-hmm. But what was interesting, and we're going to get into that, but what was interesting is when I walked over there, there was like this, this, uh, this godly moment because immediately within two seconds of talking to you, like you have this aura about you. You have a great smile. I mean, you got a smile that'll light up the room, my friend. And you, you just, it was like, wow, okay, yeah. And then I thought, we got we got we got to have some connections that you yeah. and I share, and immediately we'll talk about that too. But you know, for those that that you know maybe living under a rock and don't know who Patrick Young is, uh, <laughs> played for the Florida Gators, Final Four team member, won an SEC championship, senior year with them, now broadcasting on the SEC network. Um, but I think one of the more important things here we're going to talk about today is extreme man of faith. Yeah. And uh, I think it's when you said, "Hey, love talking sports," but we're going to talk about some other things that are more important here. So, um, you know, and I think the 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 point that I'm getting to here is that your life's been changed forever. Yeah. And uh, if you want to talk a bit briefly here or take as much time as you want, but you know, the interesting yeah. thing about this is I just said that in a minute, you start smiling the minute I said that. And most people, I mean, they're, they're, when they're about to hear this, there's no smile coming on their face, but it's, you've, it's you've, a matter of, yeah. I mean, these last few months it. have been, yeah, changes, <laughs> changes in an understatement uh, of what these last year and some change has been, and what, what what else can you do? You have a, you have a choice. We have a choice with everything that happens within our lives, of how we're going to allow that situation to define us, how we're going to have our perspective on that thing, and yeah, a lot of parts of which what, what has happened uh, in me and to me, uh, I would not have ever written it up to happen that way. I wouldn't have asked for the platform to, of course, ask for the platform in regards to the impact mm-hmm. and being able to do something that is actually really purposeful, and I have a vision for it now and. Uh, just seeing the real time effect, and I'm in the middle still of of what people see as a crisis, a life change, and of course, but um, again, I wouldn't have written it up to happen this way. But I'm just grateful that I'm in a position where I can look back and say, "All right, you know, things have gotten so much better since then. That it was difficult in the beginning mm-hmm. after my accident, uh, but gosh, the number of blessings I have to count and to be grateful for." And that's the thing about gratitude. That's a big, a big thing that I, I, I strive to when I, when I go and speak and I talk to people about storms in life, preparing for storms. How you, how do you do that? You practice gratitude. Yes. And gratitude is not always the easy choice. Oftentimes, gratitude is the hardest choice. That you're in the middle of something out of your control. It's hard. It sucks. And yet you're saying, I'm choosing to focus my mind on things that I'm thankful that I do have in this moment. Like for me, thankful that I was, number one, thankful that I'm still alive. Amen. Thankful, just so thankful thankful and grateful to still be alive, to have a wonderful family. My wife has been, she was my fiance at the time, but my wife has been unbelievable. Uh, just her faith in all of this, uh, that she hadn't wavered one second. Ah. It, it literally, like, we were in the hospital after my accident, after my surgery, and we're playing this card game. And it's a, a, a card game to help us facilitate deeper conversation because 
technically we're newlyweds and spending okay. time in the hospital. And, and the question comes up and it's like, what would you categorize or define or title this phase in our life right now? Okay. And I'm just like, what a question. Right. And I'm just like, do you believe? Do you believe, first off, that God is who he is? That God, first off, that God is real, that God is who he says he is, and what God says about you? And if so, what are you afraid of? Mm-hmm. If, if you believe all these things and you've gone to church, you've done all this, 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 you have this foundation of faith, you're in a situation now where God is putting you in a position where you have to, do, as we should always, depend on him for everything, but like really, truly— you're in a position where you say, all right, God, I'm here. This is the situation that I'm in. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. And I'm like, when I could reframe my mind to seeing that and she as well, we're like, oh my goodness, like this is a blessing. I it's an opportunity. I heard someone say the other day that if you pray, don't worry. But if you worry, don't pray. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so take us down to kind of take us back into yeah. that month of June, uh, you know, in Nebraska and, and talk a little bit briefly about, you know, that, what got you to that situation you were just describing. So uh, you, you began talking about my, my basketball career, mm-hmm. played at the University of Florida, played four years. We actually won, we won three SEC regular season tr- uh, championships. There was no chance we were going to win four because <laughs> the 2012 year was Anthony Davis, Kentucky year, one of the best teams in college basketball history right. of all time, one Period. of the best. Uh, so a- after my career, went to the Final Four. Uh, I went to, at, at Florida, went to the NBA for a little bit, then played ball overseas, had a bunch of injuries, had a surgery on my knee that didn't go well. Uh, we're, we're going into the pa- pandemic year, looking at the pandemic year, uh, it was just a tough time because everything was changed. When I was mm-hmm. over, I was overseas in Europe. Uh, I really enjoyed my time over there, getting a chance to play ball. But just the injuries and then the pandemic, not getting a chance to really live life while I was over there because you had to stay indoors. You couldn't do this. You can't do that. Blah blah. blah. Just you, we know how it was right. in that year for everybody. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to play basketball anymore. <laughs> I want to go on to this next phase and chapter of my life. So I came back. Came back to America. This would be in uh, 2021, and okay. heck of a year, uh, great year for me. Back with my family, getting a chance to kind of experience the things that I miss out on for the longest. You know, when you're overseas playing basketball, you're going for ten months. Wow, you miss a lot of relationships, friends, holidays, birthdays. birthdays yeah, uh, you name it. Um, also, getting a chance to dive back into church. I said, you know what? I, I really want to get back involved with Church of 1122 men's groups. I really missed that when I was overseas. There wasn't a, a, a core. Like, as believers, you need to have other believers around you to kind of sharpen you, hold you accountable, help you know that you're kind of focused on spiritual things. So uh, that I was involved back in the church, getting a chance to hang out with, with friends. It's the summertime, going to the beach, just enjoying life. Got the opportunity to, uh, got my first real job with Tim Tebow's for-profit company, uh, Campus Legends, and then also got hired on with the SEC Network and re- reconnected with yeah. my fiance at that time. Oh, wow. Because we hadn't, Whitney and I, my wife, we hadn't spoken for three years up until that point. Oh, wow. I've known her since college. We hadn't spoken for three years. So this year, 2021, it was awesome. Yeah, it sounds like Getting it. Getting married, got this great career, and um, we, get, we get engaged. I proposed to her in, in Paris oh, wow. in December, and uh, we decided that uh, we were going to get married on July 9th of 2022. So you know how it is, man. Preparing, you're just ready for yeah, that next just chapter. Ready for the day. Just ready, yeah, you're just right. ready to start and and get to that point. And uh, I'm still working with SEC. The season's over around March. Teams didn't do as well as we thought they would do in the tournament. Nobody, not a single team made the final four. <laughs> uh, then, uh, SEC, then uh, my lease on my place ended as well. So I said, hey, you know what? My wife, she lives in Nebraska with her daughter. Okay, my daughter now. Uh, let's. You know, let me come up there with you guys and spend spend a good amount of time so we can continue to cultivate relationship. Cause I always just felt so bad that Whitney would come down to visit me and she'd be away from her daughter because like they are yin and yang. You know, they are they are so tight and I, I really envy uh, how close Whitney is with her daughter, with our daughter. Uh, something that I'm developing now Under, to this day understood. and it's just going to take time. Yeah. Um, so while I was up there in Nebraska, there's a lot of corn and we're in a small <laughs> town. I did. I got bored. I got bored while I was up there. Sure. Uh, so fortunately when I was up there in, uh, 
this is May, April, May, around that time. I started working with an irrigation company, just doing something on the side. I had so much time. Also playing a lot of golf. Really, really enjoyed that. And um, with this irrigation company, I was working pretty much from 5 a.m. to like 4 p.m., full days. But it was it was great work. Uh, you know that it's actually benefiting farmers and people. Uh, you know, if they can't water their crops, they can't feed you know thousands of people around around the world or, or you know wherever that may be. And um, just one day after, you Re- know, really hard manual yeah. labor. By the yeah, way. really hard. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, like you, power drills, picking stuff up, uh, working machinery in that hot sun. I I, I, I like it. I like being outside. So it, it was it was great. And the guy I was working with, great being able to work with him because he he was our boss, but he's in the trenches with us every single day. So it's not like He's looking over us and saying, "Oh, you need to do better." Like he's he's suffering through, every, and I love that. Okay. I love a boss that's yeah, willing he just to rolls up sleeves right. and gets in there with you. Uh, so it, it, I was doing it for about two weeks, and we're ten days out from the wedding, and um, just another casual day of 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 doing this work, and we were transporting these large pieces of of pivots, or that we call them, of a uh, of a uh, what's these things called. Uh, they're called pivots. Uh, the, the, the huge things that go in a circle in, in water. Okay, water almost farms. like a huge yeah. sprinkler. Yes, yes. Pretty, pretty much, yeah. But they come in They come in six parts, and they, we call each one a span. Okay. And, and the, a span goes about 150 to 175 feet. So you, transporting them is a, it's a, it's a process. It's a task, yeah. Uh, so we finished up uh, putting the fifth one down and, and putting it together, and then we're going back to the farm site to get the last one. And, and I'm heading out first. It's... Two miles, two miles away, three miles, if that. And I'm on this dirt road I'm unfamiliar with, and and we mentioned it before, just not locked in to life in that moment. And uh, as I'm going on this dirt road, not speeding, thirty miles, thirty five miles per hour, uh, I didn't realize that the stop sign once I was coming up and going down the slope was literally twenty to thirty feet away. As soon as I realized it there was not enough time to stop and get out of the way. And the reaction was, I'm in an old truck, just like, oh my gosh, like this is surreal that, right. you know, the car is, I'm in a situation that I, there's nothing like, we, we've all had a situation where we yeah. drive, we drive our car, the brakes, yeah. we drive our car and we're just like, oh crap, you know, we yep. can fix it really quickly, but there was no fixing this. And I realized like, that this is, ser- it was serious in the car. I was just so grateful that there was no oncoming traffic from either way car continues to go parallel to the road as I try to get out of the way. That's just my mindset. And it flips over down this ditch mm. one time. And as soon as all that weight compresses back on all four tires, I just felt a pop in the back, in my back. Mm. And gosh, man, talk about, it was surreal. It was, I, 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 I can, you know, I still think about it sometimes of being in that situation. Um, but I'm just so thankful that, first off, that I was able to grab my phone, right, as yeah. we mentioned before, uh, and that I was able to get help in such a fast manner. But I never it, I never passed out, was never unconscious, wow. was awake the entire time. I ended up, I fractured my T7 in my back, my thoracic spine. I uh, fractured my scapula in my shoulder, my shoulder blade. Didn't need surgery. Uh, bruised a bunch of ribs and then fractured one. That was probably the most uncomfortable part about everything. The ribs. You, the ri- you can't laugh. You can't you breathe. Sneeze, you can't, can't do anything. You can't do anything. Wow. Oh, man. And, and you know, and the thing is, no one's around. Like, it's just yeah. you. You know, you mentioned that earlier, that there's no one around. There's no oncoming traffic. And you made a comment earlier when we were talking that if you didn't have your phone, you'd have been there for a couple hours. Yeah. For- fortunately, uh, and I, I'm going to endorse is that for everyone, Life360. Yes. If you're a parent... Get everyone get on the Life 360 app because it alerted my family that I had gotten into an accident. So even if I oh, couldn't have fantastic. grabbed my phone, um, there is they would have known that something happened. Oh, uh, they would have known, and, and you know the, the dots would have gotten connected some kind of way. Uh, but I had to. I, I called my buddy that I was working with because he 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 was well behind me. You know, half a mile behind me because I was trying to get to the site. Um, he was still doing. He was he was in a much bigger truck, and it takes a, it's a little bit longer to get going. Um, I called him immediately and said, hey, buddy, I crashed. Please call 911. He comes to the stop sign, and he's like, where are you? I'm like, oh, because you're, he, yeah, he Cause you're in the couldn't see the, ve- couldn't see the vehicle from, wow. from, from the road, from the stop sign. Uh, so that's another just, again, 
I would have been down there for hours if it hadn't been for. That's how deep of a dish. That's how deep. Is. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, it wasn't. It wasn't just like a. It was like it, it, there was no fencing or anything on that side. It was like I, I could have gone down for for a while if that thing would have kept flipping. Wow. Um. So I uh, called my wife. Called my mom. Uh, they and I so think they dropped everything and just showed up. You know, I, I'm so grateful for that. But uh, I was down there for about 15 to 20 minutes before the ambulance came. Um, I was in a lot of pain. They had they got me in the ambulance and they life flighted me to South Dakota, uh, Sioux Falls. Mm-hmm. That was the nearest and the best hospital I could have could have gone to. My surgeon was actually like, it is a gator. What are the odds? Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, he had to perform eight and a half hour surgery. Wow. Two rods, uh, 12 screws in my back. And, um, yeah, man, I, I just remember when I was, when I was there before surgery, cause I, I was in a good amount of pain at that point, but I didn't want to take anything. Cause I'm like, I know this, is, it'll subside. I called pastor Joby, uh, Joby Martin and wow. prayed with him. Um, I just, it was so, so surreal, man. I can't even the emotions at that time. But when I was in the helicopter, I just remember the man that I was, it was such a nice man that was with me and talking with me the whole time and prayed with me. And, and, uh, we talked about golf. We talked about so many random things, but I just felt the peace of God over me. I didn't have the answers. I didn't know what was next. I didn't know, you know, I'm fearful for the future and all those things at, at the time, but I just felt a peace of God that said, Hey, everything's gonna, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. And I cannot, logically explain why. Wow. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't need to explain logically why, because it's not a, a formula. I just, in that moment, because of the foundation of my faith and God just supernaturally coming up, he said, everything's going to be okay. I'm here with you. So, uh, man. Was now prior to the accident, has your faith always been a huge pillar in your life? I would say yes. I would say yes. It has been a, a, a huge pillar of my life. I, I've grown up and grew up in church, but it, at, at some point, you know, your parents' faith has, your faith has to become your own faith. And your parents do whatever they can to, mm-hmm. and you know, we, we want our kids, there's no formula for, I, I'm reading, reading this awesome book called Disciple Making Parent with my wife. You know, there's, there's nothing you can do perfectly to raise your kids to choose to follow Jesus. You can put them around the environment. It's a choice that they have to make. And oftentimes they have to experience a little bit of the world. You hope they don't, but I had to experience a little bit of the world and my own sin and seeing like, this is not the path you want to go down to because it's not, it's not a restriction basis or of like, don't do these things because I, you know, I'm withholding. It's like, don't do these things because that path doesn't lead down to fruit or mm-hmm. uh, peace or joy. I just can't even count the number of things that I just like, look back and say, man, I wish I would have stayed on the path of righteousness. And I'm just so thankful at the university of Florida. Uh, I met a man through athletes in action that helped me first off to see through his, through his life. It wasn't anything he did special, but I just realized that the way he lived his life, I was like, my Christian walk looks looks nothing like yours. And I was convicted by that. And then he also helped me to see that um, I can worship God through basketball. I can worship God through how I represent myself as a teammate and in the weight room. And when I was able to reframe my mind and see that it's like, it's, you're not doing something to show out to everybody, but the way you carry yourself, people will notice a difference. And, and your mindset is focused on pleasing God because God doesn't care about results. Correct. He doesn't care about wins or losses, but how, what is your witness out there as you're, you know, in the trenches of practice when you're getting challenged, when are you working your butt off? Are you being a great teammate? Are you able to, you know, even if you mess up, can you apologize? Can you get over those things? And it took me a while to get figure that out. Well, you know, it's it took me part, a while. Part of growing up, too, yeah. you know. I mean, oftentimes in collegiate sports, you know, we, you know, as fans and just people in general, we forget that some of these individuals are still kids. Right. You're still growing up. Like, That's just because so you're legally 18 doesn't mean you've grown up yet. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I don't think I grew up till I got in my 30s, man. Gosh. I mean, this is how it is. Yeah, there's such a high expectation on, and it's it's double, it's a double-edged sword for sure, because I would never would want to take the opportunity away from these the, the kids that are getting these great NIL deals and the recognition. But, you know, if, if you don't have the right people around you kind of guiding you and keeping your head 
in a pl- like who's working on the character of this right. person? Uh, who's working on the man? Who's preparing them for life when people aren't around? When there's no nothing external around? When the ball stop? When you can't do the things that you used to do? The ball stops bouncing. How are you prepared for life after that? Who are you? Who do people say you are? Uh, what do those relationships actually look like? Right. And I got got to taste that. You know, when I when I went overseas and had my injuries and whatnot, a lot of people that were my friends when I was at Florida, they they weren't around anymore. They Stop weren't even calling. trying. Stop calling. Yeah. Stop connecting. Um, so it, it helped me to see who was real and who was fake. But yeah, it's it's a big. I wish I had a mentor or somebody else that could have kind of walked and guided me through that. But it's, it's again, it's another thing that's hard, it's hard to trust in that space when you're a a superstar at age. 16, 17 years old, and someone wants something from you. Wow. You know, you hear that story all the time. And you said something where you go that, you know, you find out, you find out who's really there for you, you know, and when things aren't going your way. And, you know, you made this comment earlier that the the family and the friends that just huddled around you yeah. during that moment that stopped what they were doing, got on a plane, got to Sioux Falls. Yeah. And, oh, and were yeah. theirs. You just you, you talk about how grateful you are for that. But I mean, people yes. stopped their lives to be there on a dime. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My my mom and sister and my wife and some of my best friends when I was in Sioux Falls, they dropped everything to show up for me. And it was I gosh, like you don't you don't really realize and I'm sure a lot more people would have if they could have, but the fact that they just they didn't care. They're like, "No, no, our my best friend is hurting and I yeah. need to be there with him and and they help bring light. Like we play a game. We play. I got introduced to Monopoly Deal. <laughs> I don't know if you ever played Monopoly Deal. Not mon- no, not Monopoly Do not Deal. Play, you will never pick up the board game Monopoly again <laughs> because that game is is demonic. <laughs> <laughs> that, is that game divides. The card game, first off, it takes 10 to 15 minutes a game. Okay. So that's already just rapid play. Rapid play. The board game just. Get rid of the board game of Monopoly. Okay. Never play it again. Uh, still, still like the game. You know, still love the story behind it. But the card, <laughs> the card game. When, when I taught my daughter how to play, she she won like six or seven times in a row. It's not it's not um, overly complicated. Uh, but having that community, man, and my and my best friend Alex. Actually, we won a state championship here at Providence. He he came up with. He's really a big part of why I started my foundation. And we were going to think of naming it something like One More, which is pretty funny That's as well. Ironic, but the idea behind it was, uh, you know, take, taking one more step, one more mile, one more uh, person of support or whatever it is to, because uh, ideas like with with spinal cord injuries, with healthcare and, and medicine as well. There's so many people that are underinsured or uninsured that just don't like. I've been so blessed, man through this process that my insurance has covered like everything, you know, wow. I haven't had any gaps, haven't had to fill in any of those blanks like this spinal, the, on average, the first year of a spinal cord injury, a person is, you know, with insurance that are out of, are out of their pocket, $1.3 million in one year, one year, one year, $1.3 million. Wow. Yes. Cause just, just staying at a spinal cord hospital. I mean, it's probably like $10,000 a day where I was at, I was in, um, at Craig Hospital in Denver for for five weeks, so our our idea was was hey, let's let's try to find a way to fill in the gaps for those people that are underinsured, uninsured, that don't have the support, because there's a high level of defeatism that you face when you're told that you may never walk again, you're told that you may never be able to do work in the same capacity, which right. like if, if that irrigation job was my primary source of income, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that job. Right. Again. You have changed. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Um, what, cause I wanted to help people in this process. You, you may have limitations physically. We all have limited, even, even able body have physical, phys, uh, physical limitations, things we mm-hmm. can and can't do, but wanted to let people know, Hey, you can still live a full life and have independence and freedom. But if if someone can come in and fill some gaps, maybe financially, maybe emotionally, but whatever it may be, your life can be, be just as fruitful and awesome as it was before. And um, his, his thing, what my best friend has done, he's run a mile every day since my accident. Wow. He's run a mile every single day for me. He said, I'm going to run a mile until you, until you walk again. And um, he actually is, 
uh, recruited some other people to join in that in in with him, which has been really awesome. Because it's also wanting to encourage able-bodied people that are not disabled. Hey, how many times have you know for my accident? Oh man, I, I got to work out today. I have <laughs> to do that. I have to go, and it's like. Do you not realize how much of a privilege it is? Like there's people that would perspective, right? That would do Man. anything to get up and just run wow. a mile if they could. And um it's just to instill that gratitude and encourage people to be mindful of those. You see a person in a wheelchair, you don't know how they got there, but that person more than likely would do anything to not be in it, create some compassion, right? Some sympathy, not not pity but some sympathy, some empathy in that, in that situation. And, and um, yeah, that's, that's the, been the cause of the foundation and the, and the idea. And uh, I'm really excited that God's given me this platform to see something that I had not seen before. And it's, it's a huge gap. It's a, it's a huge area that um, needs some love and attention. And hopefully I can help a lot, a lot, you know, more than just one more. Yeah. Well, it, every year is going to be one more. One, one, once I help one person, who's the next one? Yeah. Who's the next one? That's going to be the idea behind that. That's fantastic. That. So, you know, the team over at SEC Network, I mean, obviously this happens. And, you know, how did you want to go back? Did they ask oh, you man. to come back? Like, what happened? I'm really, I'm really glad you asked about that. So, you know, in the hospital, in my, my mindset, so much, again, so much love and support from people all throughout, especially with the SEC community. And I'm just like, man, why did this happen? What's the future going to look like? Fear setting in. Am I going to be able to do the SEC job? And, you know, Pete Waters, my boss, the first thing I, I told him was like, Pete, man, how am I going to be able to do the touchscreen again? <laughs> and now that's, I'm much worried about doing the touchscreen. Standing up doing And uh, actually yeah. this this past uh, Tuesday, it has been the 10th, that was the first time I did the touchscreen in my wheelchair. Congratulations. Uh, on TV. So, and it was fine. It yeah. was, but that's that's the enemy just trying to attack my mind and there doubt go. God. Uh that's, I would say that's human nature to think like fear. What, I don't know why we go to fear and things that we can't do. And the worst thing is first, fear and faith. I think I, I got this from John's book. John, oh, yeah, shout did. out to yep. John, John yep. Gordon. Fear and faith are, have this in common. They are both based on things in the future that have not happened yet. Yes. So why choose fear? Patrick, you know the irony behind that statement? I've heard that three times in 48 hours. Really? From different people. That's crazy. John's outreach is huge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I was reading, uh, uh, cause I, I want my daughter sometimes can be a little negative. Mm-hmm. And I think it was, uh, I think it's from the positive dog. Oh yeah. It, it's positive dog or it's a shark and the goldfish. One of his like smaller books. And I'm like, man, that's good. Oh yeah. That's great right there. Like I, I need to make sure, I, you know, put that out of the caption, one of my, my posts or something that's like great. that. Um, uh, but the SEC, they have been, they were awesome, man. Like, they they came to me at a standpoint and said, "Do you want to still do this job?" Oh wow! And I said, "Yeah, I want to still do it." They were just like, "How are you gonna, you know, worry about? Am I gonna be able to travel and and all this thing?" And, and giving credit again to Craig Hospital and those the spinal cord hospitals across the country, they do a fantastic job of helping you get to independence. We did a uh, a, a a trial run at an airport so I could understand what it's like to go through the airport in my chair and all this stuff. Uh, but I did notice, you know, while I was in the hospital, there's a lot of people, there were a lot, and, and, and you're every, you're justified. I, I don't want to discount a person that's going through something like this and, and say your, your emotion, you're justified with your emotions. You're mm-hmm. justified with your fears, but those fears end up paralyzing you from seeing the things that you can do and the opportunities that are still out there and that you can overcome those things. Right. You know, I'm there in the hospital and people aren't even trying to make their bed. Like it's, you, you get to do like an independent trial before you get to leave. And it's like, they will only, they, the nurses will only help you come to you when you call them. Okay. And if you call them, you have to tell them exactly what you need and to do. Other than that, you know, for the whole weekend, you're by yourself. You get to do everything on your own. And, and there was were so the first many times. This is the first time you're doing this. Yeah, this was in okay. the hospital. And, wow. and like, you know, I'm going through the hospital and I hear the conversations and I'm talking with the nurses and, and people there. And they're like, man, I just wish I just wish this person could strive and try. And they're just so stuck on what's happened. And again, I'm not trying to tell someone don't 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 look back at those things and say and, and be stuck. 
but look to, okay, this is the situation. Like, I'm like, my situation is what it is. Right. It is not going to change unless, you know, it may never change, but it doesn't mean I have to be stuck in a, my mind, you know, paralyzed in my mind as well. And people were paralyzed mentally uh, there from what had happened. Um, so just, just through that and learning that process, I'm like, you know what? I am going to become a, a victor over this situation. I wanted to get home so badly too. And then I wanted to help my wife out as much when I got home so I can know how to take care of myself. So it'd be less of a burden on her. Cause she's the one that chose, you know, we, she didn't have to like, she didn't, she didn't owe me anything. We weren't married when I had my accident. You know, wow. not that I would ever think that she says, would just walk away from me. Says a lot about But her. she didn't owe me a single thing. You know, I, I, spirit le- legally, spiritually, we were not married. We're not connected, not joined together. But and I'm like, you know what? I owe this woman. I owe my, I owe uh, our daughter that I am going to show her in the midst of this. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to uh, choose to allow the enemy to attack me. I got my days, man. We all get our days. Sure. But I'm like. How can I show up? Nothing, nothing has taken away my choice of how I'm going to show up on a daily basis. Yeah. This, I can still be, and I've said this before, I can still be a great dad. I can still be a great husband. I can still be a great human Love being. It. I can still be a great man of faith. I can still be a positive. Like nothing has changed the way it changes those things. So yeah, I just wanted to like go to those rooms of people and say, hey man, your life isn't wake over. Up. Hey, like, wake, wake up. up. It's okay. Yeah. You know, and um that's why I'm so grateful. I'm, I'm here at Brooks Rehab, and like I know these things within myself. But sometimes I got to see somebody mm-hmm. else that is choosing joy too to to get me to light my fire up again too. Right. Uh, but um, yeah, man, that's that's been it. Man, what a message! I mean, we're surrounded by a brick wall. I'm about ready to run through it right now. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you because you know the thing with me is that you know you're so positive, and I love how you don't choose fear. You know, and I heard someone tell me that fear is false expectations appearing real. Yes, you know, and it takes away all the good in your life. You know, and the minute the minute you succumb to that, you're done. And the minute you let go of it, everything's on the other side of it. Yeah, and um, you know, you've clearly done that. And you absolutely show that, you know, in your day to day and, and, and the times that we spoke on the phone and, you know, the times that we've met in person, even today. How was uh, Miami, by the way? Down yeah, at the, no, uh, man, the Orange Bowl was Orange great Bowl. down there. It was great. It's always good when you win, right? Yeah. It makes the trip a little bit easier, but that was my son's birthday gift to go watch yeah, that. That was, that, great. Was, that, was, uh, that was a fun time. Thank you for asking. So, you know, the SEC Network, you know, you're still there, you're doing your thing. Man, I, I got to say, other day, and I told you this before, it was so cool watching Pat Bradley during the halftime of a game come out and say, hey, update on my guy. And it was like Patrick Young, and he showed you putting in the work. He's like, Patrick's putting in the work. And now yeah. when he says putting in the work, yeah. you know, I think you know, I think I go to the gym, I put in work. This is not you were putting in work. And you see this, this uh, you, you were essentially walking. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you were walking, and you could see, you know, your arms are on the treadmill, and you're gripping it, and the yeah. veins are coming out of <laughs> your arms, and the amount of effort you're putting into this. But you were doing it, man. Yeah. You were doing it, and you were doing it without, you know— you still had a smile on your face. You might have been grimacing a little bit, but right. you were doing it, and you weren't letting fear take over, man. Well, uh, gosh, I don't know where to start with this one. Uh, great, a great story. So I, I left Craig, left Craig Hospital, and um, you know they they and I understand I understand why they do this because uh, the medical world has gotten you know so screwed over at times with wanting to help people have hope for their future uh-huh. so they have to protect themselves and kind of can't say, hey, one day, if you do X, Y, and Z, this will happen. So, you know, they gave, they give you a hope to live independently, but not to walk, not to exceed, you know, expectations. So I come, I come to Brooks, uh, and and I, I had uh, met with the pool therapist, his name, John, fantastic guy. Uh, can't wait. love love the loved his energy. His his two kids actually uh, swim at the University of Florida, which is pretty cool. So, uh, I meet with him this one day, and and uh, I, I wasn't going in the pool with him. He just wanted to sit down to talk and see how I'm doing and evaluate me a little bit. And he's like, Patrick, you will walk again. And I'm just like, Yeah, man, that's cool. Just see see where my mindset was uh-huh. at this point because oh, I yeah. gotten kind of a little discouraged. And he's like, No, trust me. You know, I, like I, I have helped people that have injuries higher up, you know, a higher up injury level with that can't do the X, Y, and Z. And trust me, it's going to take time. You're going to hate it, but it's very, it's possible. And he said, um, the number one thing is that there's two, two really cool things he told me. 
they weren't really cool in the moment, I guess you would say. <laughs> but but think looking back at it now, and I'm still living. He said the first thing learned helplessness is the worst thing um, to affect your recovery. Okay, and I'm like, what do you mean? He's like that. First off, he said your wheelchair, even though it gives you function, gives you the ability to move around. Um, it takes away from you ever really having that natural function of walking again. You know, there's no signals going down to your legs when you're just, if we're sitting all day. And he, so he said, I want you to get out of your wheelchair when you're home. Okay. Get, get, he, I bought some like goalie pants that have the yep. padding on your knees. It's like, I want you to treat your recovery like a baby learning how to walk again. Go back to primal instincts. St- you know, a baby starts on his back. You know, this yeah. starts on starts on the back. They're swallowed up. They're looking around. They're starting to use their neck and their eyes. They eventually learn how to turn over, get on their tummy, tummy time. They push themselves up and they start pulling themselves around. And all that is the the primal instincts you wanted me to start to learn. And he said within that, he t- looked at my wife and he said, I don't want you to help him with anything around the house. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that was equally as hard for her too. No. <laughs> no, it wasn't? <laughs> Are you no. kidding me? Oh, I would have My wife been. is cold blooded. <laughs> She's like, I ain't helping him with bleep. Uh, fill in the blank and and it's like he's like john john he's like uh you know he probably can't use the microwave and certain things you're gonna need to help him out with a few things but for the most part okay. make sure he's crawling everywhere and within that process you know things started waking up in my system my hip flexor started activating um i was wow. starting starting to able have uh, ability to move my toes and these are things i wasn't supposed to be able to do yeah. science would say you know, where the level of my injury, a complete injury, I wouldn't be able to do those things. So, it, you know, my my thought process and message in that is, you know, you never know what a person may need in a moment, but something so small as that spark of hope. You know, I I, I believed in my heart, in, in my mind, but I needed that touch from John. And knowing that it was going to be a hard path, it, it, it wasn't about it being easy, but right. that touch of him saying, you know, Follow this process, and it's gonna suck. He's like, it's gonna suck. You're gonna want to cry. You're gonna want to. And I did. I and I still hate it. I still hate being on my stomach all day. But when I just think about the end in mind, and the testimony, and the the ability to encourage other people, I'm just like, it's so worth it. Yeah, it's so worth it. Well, you know, it's a it's the process. You yeah, know, we talk about this all the time. It's the it's the, we hear it all the time and. You know, it kind of goes back to a guy that we both know, Inky Johnson. Oh, talks yeah. about yeah. it's the process. Yeah, man. Yeah. And you got a chance to uh, to connect with Inky yeah. here over the holidays, man. How'd that go? Yeah, no, I, I got to thank you again for that connection. Yeah, man, it's um, great guy. Inky is somebody I had looked up to for a long time, knowing his story, knowing uh, where he was supposed to be, uh, where he, inv- you know, he, if anyone hasn't heard his story of how he got to where he is now and uh, how he started and working out as a kid, telling his mom to leave the lights on so he can continue working on drills and being all like blown away. And one of the things that, the first thing that I told him, I was like, Inky, one of the coolest things that you've ever said was how after your injury, um, he was going to like FCA or Athletes in Action like every week after Mm -hmm. his injury. His faith consistent brought his dad to faith. And I said, and he said, out of, they said, there's no amount of money football contract, whatever, that could replace the impact in my dad, knowing where my dad's going to be eternally and impacting his life. And I was like, Inky, that's the coolest thing that is that, that I, I love about anything that you've done and said. And um, just, he he was super encouraging. I asked him like how he got into his speaking, I asked him, um, he was just sharing so much, so much stuff with me. And, and uh, I think I told you earlier, the coolest thing, I was like, Inky, what's one piece of advice? Because, you know, he, he went through a process with his arm that, um, I think it was one year or two years where they went through all these things, but nothing happened. And right. he just talked about how he he committed to that process every single day, every single. But the the biggest thing for him was how he just showed up in that process and how he's okay with working his butt off and knowing that the result. Well, I can't and I can't put it in his words, but I was just like, man, the way that he had the faith and just continue and and it, how it molded him. Mm-hmm. But he said, Patrick. The way you show up in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this uh, crisis, however other people want to label it, I don't label it as anything negative, but I understand how the world, worldly people would, right. might look at it from the outside in. The way you show up with joy, with your energy, 
you have no idea how it's going to affect people. You don't. He said, five years down the road, he said, he said this has happened to him multiple times, that two, three, four, five years down the road, people that he's probably briefly interacted with, they say how he, him showing up and being who he was authentically, how it affected them. And so I'm like, man, I can do that. Yeah. I can show up. I can show up daily. It's, it's you know, that was something I struggled with as an athlete, being an everyday guy, you know, every day putting my hard hat on, bring great energy. But now that I understand in the grand scheme of life, how it can affect people with real problems and real issues, not just, you know, putting a ball in the hoop, not that, mm-hmm. not that there's not sports aren't great, but there's so much more to life than that. I'm like, man, I, I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity when people see me, they don't know what I'm feeling or I'm thinking, right. but I can just affect them with my energy. So, uh, well, you can either affect or infect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, you affect people, you know, in a positive way. And, you know, it, you need to be sharing this story with more people, man. I'm so glad you're on here, but I mean, you need to be out in front of corporations, yeah. you know, people that are always dealing with adversity in the workforce. I mean, it's always going to be there. Right. But the fact that you have the ability to to share a story that says, listen, things happen in our lives, you know, I mean, and it doesn't always have to be something of this magnitude, but something's going right. to happen to you. It Absolutely. is. And we're all affected and impacted by it different ways, but the smile you choose to put on, you know, and, and the joy that you're bringing to people and the yeah. energy, I mean, the energy in this room right now, yeah. it's infectious <laughs> in such a good way. You know, I don't even see our cameraman behind me, but I know he's smiling. <laughs> I, I can feel it. And it's, it's, it's part of it. And, you know, and, um, you know, you talked about this earlier and you, you said a quote that came from Les Miles oh, yeah. and I love it. And honestly, you know, we talked about this. This should be the mantra of your speaking engagement. And, you know, for people that are looking for a great speaker right now, I'm sitting in front of one. <laughs> I mean, he is right here in our own backyard and available and it's it's phenomenal. And, and, and what was that quote? Live full, die empty. I love it. Live full, die empty. It's like the, 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 Ability, or say the ability, but seeing my the fragility of my morality in my eyes and understanding, like, hey, we all have it. We all know this instinctually that we have an expiration date. That life is mm. at some point. Uh, so why why are we playing safe? Why are we why are we focusing on things that we can't? And I'm not saying don't have five year, ten year plans. So those things are great. But are you living right now? Yes. Truly. Are you living? And I'm not talking about prosperity. I'm not talking about things that you can't control. Are you valuing your relationships? Are you living towards those things that you really value? Uh, Are you pushing yourself? Are you going after that thing? Yes. Book, job, career, hobby, uh, the right people and relationships. I had been so caught up in just trying to be focused on being liked by people, being a people pleaser, uh, wanting to fit in. And it's like, I lost myself. I lost just me. The things that I loved about me, the things that I loved, just because I wanted to fit in with people. When you can fully live and be yourself, you'll attract the right people around you. A hundred percent. Yeah, You'll attract the right people that don't care about, you know, what you can do for them. They just love you for who you are. And uh, this has really helped me to see that so much because I've been so used to being this physical presence of a person my whole life, and yeah, you, know, you still. I guess I'm still should, strong. I was going to say, man, I you're guess, a pretty I big guess, physical. I guess, <laughs> I guess so. Uh, but when that when when that's been stripped away, when the thing that you thought was so valuable about yourself is stripped away, who are the people that are still? First off, what do you still think about yourself? You know, what does what it do you, define you? Does that you know what what do I still think about myself? Even though I can't squat four hundred pounds like I like I used to be able to do. And then how am I handling it? How am I showing up? So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's so much I feel like a, a value I think I can bring to people. And, you know, I've spoken with companies before here in Jacksonville, and the thing that feedback I've gotten from a lot of people is like, man, your, your accident's only been like four or five months ago, and you're doing this. And I'm like, yeah. life is now. Yeah, it's a calling, man. Life is now. I'm not waiting for my circumstances to change for me to live and, and nor should you. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's you the said, piece I want to live. You something. said this, live life, right. You, you, you were living life casually, yeah. every day casually. Yeah. And now you're living it with a purpose. Yes, absolutely. Intention. And we should do everything with intention. There it is with intention. Yeah. If we'd live life with intentions and we do things with a purpose. Our focus changes, our outlook changes, you know, and I love what you were saying. Like, um, I love that because 
I've caught myself living uh, casually yeah. in my life. Uh, and sometimes it still happens. And I feel like I got to like, just, you know, just snap out of it sometimes. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I know there's people out there. Uh, what did, what did, uh, Charlie, what did Damon West say when he was in here the other day? He said, man, he said, sometimes the prison between your ears is worse than the one at a maximum security. Mm. He said, I see more people locked up on the outside than I did when I was on the inside. And I was like, damn, man, that's, that's deep. And that's that deep. is so true, but it's, it's to your point. It's sad, but it's to your point. We're all focusing on something, you know, whether it's social media that's, that we're chasing, whether it's uh, the likes. I mean, when you said that, yep, yep. man, that is, that is literally, you know, and, and the world that we live in right now, unfortunately, um, there's an addiction outside of drugs and alcohol that's taking place. And it's, you know, these smartphones that, you know, are actually making us dumber. And the reality is, you know, they so are, bad. they're addictive, man. They're addictive. They and I look at they're designed son, that They're designed, designed that way. to be that way. You know, and it's interesting. I saw a, uh, well, I was talking to my son and my daughter and, you know, at the age of 15 and 16, this is, this is their life channel, right? And I'm not a fan of it, but it, the Life 360, to your point, that's how we keep up. But uh, I was telling them there was a 60 minute that came on the other day about TikTok. This blew my mind. Ryan, did you see this by chance? There's a, okay, so this is incredible. So it was measuring they went to China and they said, hey, are you, do you know what TikTok is? And the kids were like, and these are students, like middle school, high school. Yeah, I know what it is. And they're going, well, do you like it? No, no. Well, why don't you like it? You want to know why they don't like it over there? Because it's a resource to make them smarter. It's part of their school. And when they got TikTok and they're flipping through it, it's positive affirmations. Wow. And they started showing them. It's positive affirmations. It's math problems. It's constant feeds to make them smarter. And they were like, what if we were to show you this is what TikTok is in America? They couldn't believe that that's on purpose. That's to dummy down. Wow. That's to dummy down. And that's crazy. And when you hear people go on rants about that, that's real deal because they're using it as an educational tool through the feeds over there at rapid at rapid speeds. And we're using it to dummy down the generations <laughs> and make an addictive situation. Blows your mind when you yeah. think about it. Oh yeah. But to your point, we're addicted to the likes. We're addicted to what we want. And um, you know, I, I said this to my wife before I came in here today. I told her about your quote, which I love. I love. She loved it too. I said, it's, it's been a blessing to have met you. And um, I think it's awesome for a lot of different reasons. I'm a Tennessee guy. And <laughs> I love how you've said Florida guys over and over and over again. My kids get the chance to go to Florida. I'll go on record and say I'll be the biggest. All right. There the we world. go. There we go. If they get a chance. Great school, wonderful school. And it's very tough to get into. But you know what? I think that God had our paths crossed for a reason. Yeah. And I'm very blessed and grateful to have a chance to have met you and, and have you bring that joy you have into my life and the short circumstances that we've met. And, yeah. uh, and I feel compelled to have introduced you and get you to as many people as I can Thank you. to share this story. Yeah. Uh, because this is not a story of hope. This is a story of uh, perspective. And this is a story of um, how are you going to handle things when you're approached with them? Because it's our best, happen. Our, we're defined by these moments. Yeah, in truly. Life. Yeah. We are defined by these moments. And my friend, you yeah. you have definitely shown up. Yeah. So it's, I can't say enough good things funny, about that. It's funny you say that. Uh, a book that I read while I was in the hospital called uh, The Obstacle is the Way. Okay. And it's by Ryan Holiday. And it, he uses so many examples of people of, uh, throughout history that have faced impossible, adverse circumstances, and yet that thing helped them grow and become great. I mean, people that we talk about now, mm -hmm. how they handled it. Everyone else was faltering or everyone else would have shut down in the situation or let that thing. And I'm like, you know what? This is my obstacle. It's all it is. And, yeah. and you overcome obstacles. So if I can help one more person overcome their obstacle and through my it's just it's just so cool because for the longest man I, I wanted to find something purposeful I, I always envisioned that I was going to be speaking to people that I was going to but I didn't know what it was mm -hmm. and this message couldn't be any more authentic because I'm like I'm in the middle of yeah, it you're living it <laughs> I'm right? living it you're living it you're in the middle of it so if people want to find out more about you and they want to talk to you about speaking engagements what's the best way for them to get in contact with you uh, directly through my email okay. or social channels. Um, Will you give them your handles? Yeah. My, well, my, for, my, my email, okay. don't laugh. Okay. It's, it's very easy to remember. Okay. It's Patman, like Batman, Patman904 <laughs> at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, it's my childhood nickname. I just love it. There you go. And it's never going away. 
Uh, my wife laughs every time I say it. <laughs> Patman904 at gmail.com. And then my social channels, uh, remember it's Patrick without a K. So it's Patrick Young in the number four. And Instagram, Twitter, those are pr- primarily what I use. But uh, Fantastic. Got to get a website at some point, right? Yeah, got to, got to. <laughs> Maybe i be Patman, who knows? Yeah. Uh, Patman.com. But hey, guys, <laughs> you know, if you please take a chance, go out there, see, see what the good work you're doing. And if you need a speaker, I mean, we've got one of the best ones right here in our backyard. we got a lot of them. This is another one to add to the collection. Patrick, thank you for being on the show. It was an honor to have you here. Guys, if you like what you're hearing, please share this message. Please share this message. Right click, share, you know, five star rate this podcast on whatever platform. We'd love your comments on this and, uh, and share it with your friends and family. Patrick, again, thanks for being on the show. Today. Thank you so much for having Absolutely. me. I got one more shot, I'm gonna make it One more chance, I'm gonna take it I meant it when I said it, now it's time for me to do it I got one life to live, so I put all into it, yeah